Well, good morning, Bethel. Today's our final session in our virtual Deeper Life Conference. It's been a blessing to have Dr. John Avant of Life Action Ministry sharing with us. You know, I'm remembering that this week is Holy Week. It's a time when Christians all over the world remember that Jesus came, that he lived a perfect life, that he died a criminal's death on a cross on our behalf, but that he didn't stay in a grave, he rose again. And even now he's at the Father's right hand interceding on our behalf. But before he left, he told his disciples that it was actually good that he would go because he was going to send a comforter, the Holy Spirit, who would live in them. And so this morning as we tune in to hear one final message in the Deeper Life series, let's also tune in to the presence of the Holy Spirit as he guides us into all truth. Enjoy this final session. All right. Day three of our virtual revival conference, we have learned that God has granted us this time of suffering uh, as a gift. We can use this as a time to walk into revival with him. Yesterday, we saw the one word that will take us into all that God wants to do in these days, in our lives, our families, and the days ahead, our churches, and our country, and that word is, is repentance, and we learn how to do it, and we, we Put away our idols yesterday. Now, here's what I want you to do as we start. We're going to use two songs today, not just one. And I ask you to have ready the brand new song by Vertical Worship called Weapon, all right? And we're going to look today at how authentic worship, not just a song, but authentic worship is the way we will walk forward with Jesus in revival. So stop the video and, and worship to that song. Look at the words and the lyrics and, and get ready to let worship be your weapon. Then come back on. All right, did you hear those lyrics barely hanging on by a thread? Hard to see beyond everything unknown. With your strength, I'll stand. It's all I can do. I will lift my hands and sing my way through. So when I'm broken at my weakest and my darkest hour, I'll let my worship be a weapon on this battleground. From the depths of the lowest place, I will give you the highest praise. All right, now, authentic worship, not just singing a song. We saw that yesterday. Worship is more than a song. Authentic worship is our key to walk forward in revival. I, I like to say that worship is what I'll do when I see Jesus face to face for the first time. You know, maybe I'll see him face to face because of this coronavirus. Probably not, probably not for you. But what if, what if we do? You know, the worst this virus can do to us is give us heaven. You know, and for most of us, that's not going to happen. But we're going to see pain and suffering in people probably that we know are, are going to die from this. And so we have to have a weapon of worship. We have to be ready for the day we see Jesus face to face. But until then, we want to fully live. And worship means declaring his full worth, that he is enough, that he is the one who is worthy of not just our song, but also our, our life. Here's what worship is. Worship is a revival encounter with God that you can have every single day. So I, I want to take you through an encounter with God right now. That's how I want to end this. I just want you to meet with him right now. So let me walk you through an encounter with God that took place originally in a time very much like today. It was 740 BC. And we have this story in Isaiah chapter six. And it says in the year that King Uzziah died, well, why does that matter? Who cares It was what year this happened? Well, it's very important because Uzziah had reigned for 52 years. He was the greatest king, the greatest king of God's people since Solomon. But at the end of his life, he, um, he rebelled against the Lord and became arrogant and prideful, and he died a leper. The country had been prosperous, rich, successful in every way, peaceful, military victories, all was well. And then suddenly Uzziah, the great king, dies, and no one knows what to do. And most people ran away from the Lord. They just, they went on their own way, having no idea what to do. This, for us, is the year that King Uzziah died. Everything was so, was going so well, and, and we were prosperous, and everybody was having a good time. And I mean, even last week you read about it, people headed on spring break, partying on, you know? Man, what a difference a week has made. This is the year that King Uzziah died. One man, a very young man, by the way, uh, perhaps younger than many of you, one man ran to God, not away from him. In the year that King Uzziah died, Isaiah said, I saw the Lord. 
and he was sitting upon a throne. He was high and lifted up. It says the train of his robe filled the whole temple. You know why that matters? The temple was two football fields side by side in, in size. And Isaiah saw the train, just the hem of the garment of the king, and it was covering the whole temple. You know why that matters so much? Because in ancient days, when a king would conquer another king, he would cut off the end of his robe, the train of his robe, and sew it on his own. The longer the train of a robe, the greater the conqueror. And Isaiah said, oh, wow, my king conquers everything. And his robe flows over everything you face right now. Your, your loneliness, depression, discouragement, the struggles you may be having with family, cooped up there, boredom, all of that. His robe covers all of it. But do you remember another time in scripture when we hear about the hem of a garment, the train of a robe, when the poor woman in the gospels reached out to touch Jesus even though she wasn't supposed to because she was unclean from a bleeding disease. And the Lord healed her as she crawled in the dirt to touch the train of his robe. We don't have to do that anymore. Do you know that? That's a great illustration of faith, but it's not a model for how we live. Because Isaiah later goes on and says, we have been robed in his righteousness. We know him now. He doesn't invite us to crawl in the dirt to him but to run to him and we'll meet him there with open arms. Isaiah goes on and he talks about these mighty angels that were singing, holy, holy, holy. And then the whole place begins to shake and there's smoke and, and Isaiah is, is frightened and he goes, woe is me, I'm unraveled, I'm undone. Jesus used that term woe 27 times. You know what it means? A Jewish rabbi said it means all the pain of the past, all of the discomfort of the present and all the fear of the future rolled up into one. Kind of like a lot of what we feel right now, right? Isaiah said, woe is me, I'm wrecked, I'm ruined. And then he sees an angel coming toward him with a burning coal that he had taken from the fire. Isaiah says, well, I'm toast. He's gonna burn me alive. And the coal touches him and there's no pain. And the angel says, Behold, look, this has touched you. Your guilt is taken away. Your sin is atoned for. Do you realize right where you are, the Lord comes into the midst of your woe to take it away? It's atoned for. This is the gospel in the Old Testament. Meet him, meet him right there where you are today and then hear his voice. Hear the voice of the triune God. Isaiah heard Father, Son, and Holy Spirit saying, hey, who will go for us? And Isaiah said, me, hey, me, I, I'm the one, I'll go. Do you hear his voice? Because one day soon, he's gonna take you out of that lonely place. And he's gonna ask you, now what are you gonna do? Now are you really ready to follow me? Are you ready to go with me? I saw a woman named Andrea Diaz on, uh, on the news uh, a year or so ago. She was completely deaf. She couldn't hear at all until the doctors did an operation and they brought her into the office to turn on this, uh, this implant they'd put in her ear and, and, and her, her boyfriend was with her. When they turned it on for the first time in her life, she could hear. She was amazed. And right there, her boyfriend got on one knee and and he said, I wanted the first thing you hear in this world to be, I love you. Will you marry me? <laughs> Lamentations chapter three says that his mercies are new every morning. Every morning. And the gospel, the gospel is this, that every day you wake up, even now in these difficult days, the Lord is with you. And it's like he comes to you and says, I'm dying for you today. I'm rising for you today. My gospel is alive for you today. Every day his mercies are new. Encounter him today. Encounter him tomorrow in worship. And that encounter will become ongoing revival for you. Now, when you, when you turn off this video, I want you to turn on that last song that I, I, I told you to be ready ready for. Uh, this, this song from Hillsong's called Highlands or the Song of Ascents. And we're gonna send you a link of a video hike that I did a few weeks ago when we could still go outside uh, where I used the song as a theme for that hike. I will praise you on the mountain and I'll praise you when the mountain's in my way. Whatever I walk through, wherever I am, your name can move mountains wherever I stand. And if ever I even walk through the valley of death, I'll sing through the shadows. 
my song of a sense. Walk with him. Walk with him. Worship him. And we will walk out of these days and into revival. Come on, let's ascend. Let's ascend. It's time to go be with him. I've enjoyed these times with you. Go sing this song. Go sing it and sing it every day. And pretty soon, we'll have a new time to serve him. But for now, for now, you meet him in revival every day. And he'll never forsake you. He'll never leave you.